but I keep getting back to the history, the mystery of this, this great, great edifice here, the Cosmos Club. Oh, if these walls could talk. History. Lyndon Johnson, in this very room, I heard him say it. Long speech, a stemwinder speech. He said, the lion and the lamb may lie down together, but the lamb isn't going to get much sleep. I love to watch the way he used to do those, those speeches. <laughs> Here in Washington, half the time, half the people tell time by AM and PM, and the other half tell time, military time, by 100 hours, so that half the time, half the people don't know what time it is. <laughs> in this town, half the ta time, half the people write the number of the month first, and then the number of the day, and the other half writes the number of the day first and then the number of the month, so that half the time, half the people don't know what day it is. In Washington, half the time, half the people put a line through their sevens so that it doesn't look like, like a one, and the other half don't, so that half the time, half the people don't know if the thing they're buying has an allocation for 100 million or 700 million. Half the time, Bill Gates comes to town, he's the devil incarnate. The other half, he's your own personal savior. And finally, half the time Alan Greenspan testifies, you could almost understand half of what he says. <laughs> but we don't know which half. Alan Greenspan, chair of the Fed, very methodical guy. <laughs> he's kind of guy who wears a left sock and a right sock, you know the guy. Kind of guy who eats potato chips with a knife and fork. Here's Alan Greenspan. Well, you see, of course, that the point of the euro was to allow for an efficacious response to current developments, which would seek higher, lower, or unchanged rates, which would depend upon the specifics of the situation. And isn't that so true, my friend? He said that sales and income figures show an easing of the rate with which business is easing up. This can be taken as an ample proof that there is a government intention that there should be a slowing up of the slowdown. Now, a slowing up of the slowdown is not as gratifying as an upturn in the downturn. On the other hand, it is a good deal better than a speed up of the slowdown or an evening up of the downturn. Also, it suggests that this is not a good time for a switch to the readjustment rate structures. Turning specifically to rates, there's a definite decrease in the rate of increase, which clearly shows that there should be a letting up of the letdown. Of course, if the speed up should slow down, then the decrease in the increased rate of increase would turn into a decreased rate of decrease, which would impact on the GNP eased recession, causing an increase in the increase in the recession, and so it follows naturally that the inflation after the recession would get, turn the recession into depression, while inflation and the rate of deflation would give the impression of a recession during the depression. After that, he said, things are rather vague. <laughs> you notice when I speak, I don't use notes. If you learn nothing else tonight, you will learn this, always use notes. <laughs> I don't like notes, I hate, I hate notes. Can you imagine our Lord, the Sermon on the Mount, coming down, putting on his little glasses, taking out a three by five, saying, blessed are the meek. I think that's what he said. <laughs> I think that I can tell this story. I, I've learned my lesson well about using notes. If you learn nothing else tonight, remember that in the 21st century, people are smarter than you are. You've got to anchor your thought on paper so that you know wherever you speak. This is not good enough anymore. I might well admit to you that I, uh, I teach at uh, Georgetown. I only do it for the money. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I was monitor of a final examination in English. It was a room about three times bigger than this. 
in Georgetown. Maybe you know it, maybe, maybe some of you went there. And there were 300 kids in this room. It was a final in undergraduate English, 300 kids in there. And all you could hear is the whirring of the air conditioner fans overhead and the skitch, skitch, skitch of the flare tip pens as the kids were writing in the blue books. Yes, we still use blue books at Georgetown. And there it was, all you could hear. And there in the corner of the room, one kid got up and left the room. And the next day, I'm correcting the blue books. I got the big pile of blue books. I'm correcting the blue books. And this kid comes in. I said, I know what you did. You left the room. You went home and used your notes. You can't use notes in life. Life isn't like that. I will not accept it. No. And he looked at me the way they do, shaking his earring. And he said to me, do you know who I am? I said, no. He said, do you know who you're speaking to? I said, no. And with that, he took his blue book, put it right in the middle of the pile of blue books, and left the room.